Hello everyone, I am back with a new video. First of all, sorry because in the last weekend I could not release any video. It's a festive time in India, hence I was a little bit busy. Anyways, Happy Navratri, Happy Diwali from India to all the people who are listening to the video. Let's start with a new topic that is overfitting and how you are solving the overfitting. First of all, just understand what is overfitting. In the previous videos, I had discussed about how to create a model and what a model is, how a data point is fitted to a line. And, okay. Now, whenever you are taking the data, you are dividing the data into the training set and the testing set. Your full model is created on the training set and evaluated on the testing set. Now, for example, you are having five data points in the training set. While creating your model, you are fitting all the five data points in it. That means your model is memorizing it. This is the situation where overfitting rises. This is because it is not necessary all your five data points are valid. Maybe one or two is the noise and it is also fitted in the model. First of all, let's start with the definition of overfitting. Overfitting occurs when a statistically model, statistical model or a machine learning algorithm captures the noise of the data. It's the result of actually a very complicated model. More the data points you have fitted inside the model, more will be the complexity of the model. Let's understand what do you mean by the complexity of a model. For example, you are having some data points. You are just joining them with a straight line. It may happen, few points are not in your line. Now, in the next step, you want to add those points. Now, if you are adding those points from your linear model, it changes to any type of other model, which may be some curve. And the curve gets complicated and complicated when you try to fit all the points in the model. Hence, this is called increasing the complexity of the model. Also in the earlier videos, we discussed about the error term. If you remember, what's the error term? You can also refer to the other videos to get the total explanation of the error term. But now, just a memorization, just for the reference in saying you, like whenever you're fitting the model, there may be some data points and there may be some difference in the, your predicted points and your actual points. This difference is the error. So whenever you are predicting something, how much it is differenced if you subtract that particular value from the actual value, that is your error. Less the error, better your model. Now, let's see. You are working in your training set. Just forget the testing set now. Now, you will be having some error. It will be some numerical value. You have it in your table. You have in the form of some data points. Now you are making the graph for error and the model complexity. In the initial model, just I am taking a random value and my error will be very high because the sim my simple model is a straight line which is parallel to my x-axis. Okay, In that particular model, see I have made my simplest model y versus x and that is a graph between the price and the square feet. That is the area of the house and now I have particular error which I have shown in the graph. Model complexity is very less or it is approximately equal to zero and my error is very high. Now, I have increased the model of the complexity of my model little bit and transferred into a normal line. That is, for example, you can say I have applied my linear model and a linear line is there, which is having like, uh, which is having like maximum data points are being covered in my line. Now my error is decreased. So in the graph I've plotted, my error has decreased with a little bit increase in the model complexity. You can see how my the points are now differing from my error points, my predicted points. Let's increase the model complexity more. I have tried to fit more data points now. My error term has decreased more. Hence my graph is like the model complexity and the error. 
let's increase the complexity more see now the graph this graph it become a curved line which tries to fit most of the data and my error has decreased randomly a lot you can see with the high complex model my error has in decreased a lot so more the complexity less the error there would be a model where you are fitting the 100% of your data points at that particular point if you find the training error that would be zero because all of your points are being memorized now so if i see the final graph of a training error and the model complexity it would be some like what like this where the first error where the error is high will be my simplest model and we see with the increase in the complexity of the model the error keeps on dec decreasing it may be some sort of exponential relationship so this is my final graph how training error versus the model complexity now see let's move to the testing part now now i have my testing data i have my model already been created now i'll see for that particular complexity how my testing error is varying this is the data point i'm starting from the second data point that is where my, when i was using my linear regression model the shaded portion is the range from where my data is varying now when i have little bit increase the complexity the error has decreased similarly what happened in the training set but just remember the main difference between training and testing set is that the data points are different all the data points which are covered in the training point may or may not be same in the testing one i have increased the complexity of the model again again my error has decreased a little now i am making my model super complex now my error will increase this is because the model which has already been created is based on all the data points in the training data set and with a super complex model my full data points has been memorized by the model it couldn't give a generalized solution hence for this particular time of that model complexity my error shoots up so the with the more, more complex model my error shoots up more so you can say see my model has been increasing and now even it is going out of the shaded area that means even it is going out of the range of my full data points the, therefore the final graph that we can compute is somewhat of this sort there would be a point now if both the graphs are plotted in the same page we can say there would be a point where the difference between the training set training error and the testing error is minimum and that is the exact point where from where we can find the model complexity that is how much my model should be complex so that i can have the best model where my error is minimum because we cannot have any type of model which is having error as zero to make the error minimum we should have that particular point where the training error and the testing error is having the minimum difference see i have plotted both the graphs model complexity where we can say it is w dash is considered to be the exact point till where we should run our model and get the complexity till that point if it is very less it becomes a very low bias model and if it's bec becoming very high that is the difference between the training and the testing errors are very high it becomes a high variance model high variance model means if in the little bit change in the data points the output of the output or the result of my model varies abruptly that is varies very highly so this is the actual graph how which actually represents how your model is working till which complexity your model is allowed just pause this particular time go through this graph and one more thing the testing error is also called the generalized error or the true error if you and people are not clear about what the error is just give a pause to this video go to my other old videos and just give the say uh, learn the definition or the explanation read about the explanation about what error is and how we are minimizing it uh, i have also discussed about the gradient descent and minimizing using the calculus that is the derivatives that's that part is also very important to understand 
I think we can move forward. Now let's see some graphical explanation. See, I have discussed now about the overfitting thing. The, uh, in this particular graph, I would like to say, uh, just give a thought at what particular region the overfitting will occur. The definition of overfitting was that you are trying to accommodate each and every point of the data set in your model and that would be the part where the training and the testing error increases a lot because you have fitted all the points of your training data set in your model. Therefore, more the right you move to the graph, the more the overfitting the model is. These are some graphs of the regression and the classification. How, what is the overfitting and what is the underfitting example? I think it is very much clear which graph represents what. For example, in the regression first, there are two, two lines. One you can see giving us type of sine curve, another is a straight line. The straight line represents the underfitted curve, underfitted curve because very less number of points are there. And the sine curve, it tries to fit almost all the data points. It is a type of the overfitting curve. Take a pause a little bit, try to understand all the graphs. I think we should move forward. Now, there is also one of the most important thing is that your overfitting is also depending on the number of observations. See, you will get a very clear explanation just from these two graphs. The number of observation in the left graph is very few. And see, I have tried to fit all the points and how my graph looks and what becomes the complexity of the model. See the graph in the right, they are number of like, great number of points and it is it is not very easy that a model will be overfitted in this case because if it tries to overfit it will be a super complex model and maybe it is not even possible to compute with my machine so less the number of points in your full data set more the chances of overfitting now let understand this is one of the issue whenever you create a model. Now you have to solve this problem. Whenever you are, what, you are making a model, there, you, there are two important things that you have to balance. First is that how well the function fits the data and what is the magnitude of the coefficients because it actually tells how, what is the importance of that particular variable. For example, if your, your particular function has two things, one gives 6y and other is 2x. This means you can say the coefficient of y is 6 that, and it is 6 times more important whether and in compared to the other variable x, it is only 2 times important. So if we compare them, you compare these y and x, you can say y is 3 times more important than x. So the coefficients plays a very important role. Now, whenever you try uh, to find the cost what you have to see see the total cost is the measure of the fit that is how good to fit the training data and second is the measure of the magnitude of the coefficient that is it should not overfit you have to balance both the things so total cost is considered to be rss plus mod of w square that is measure of the fit plus measure of the magnitude of the coefficients now one of the methods of solving this overfitting is the rich regression or the L2 regression. What is this? In this case, see the term RSS is same. It will be always same for any type of model that you fit. Now the second term is, second term is that you have to play with the coefficients. You have to change the coefficient so that the overfitting doesn't occur. In this case, the, we introduce a new parameter lambda which is called the Turing parameter which is equal to balance of the fit of the magnitude. We have to choose lambda in such a way that, for example, you can have any numerical value for that lambda. If lambda is infinity, to see what would have. If lambda is infinity, the total term will be infinity and if lambda is very less, the total term will be equal to RSS because if it is approximately equal to zero, the whole terms converts to zero. So, lambda should be in between. 
okay okay sorry for the interruption let's move forward now let's see how would you convert this rich regression in terms of code what is our objective? Objective is that R S S plus lambda into sum of the square of the coefficient. Okay. When we are using the L2, we are using the sum of the squares of the coefficient. In this case, you are importing the ridge from the sklearn dot linear model. You are making a normal function. This is the way how we make the function in Python. That is def function name. What are the parameters that you are passing? That is data, predictors alpha and model to plot this alpha is the lambda in our case as we do not use the lambda in python it is a keyword uh, for the one liner functions now the total function and what is the motive that is very clear to view with this particular example that is we have to find the squares of the sum of the coefficients now in this case you use the ridge function that is that you have already imported and you are giving all the parameters as the function parameters and you are having what you have to predict for example in this case I have written predictor is equal to x predictor we have extended for the range of 2 to 16 like uh, I am just showing you the output then you can understand it better see this is my output of the python code ridge regression now what are the coefficients I have you the output gives many types of coefficient that is first it gives the RSS value then it gives the intercept now it keeps on changing the alpha value that is the lambda value that we have introduced and the values is the coefficients that is coefficient 1 that is x x square x cube what are the coefficients this keeps on changing and you can see what the coefficients has become also keep in mind none of the coefficients is being changed to 0 for example, you are having some model which is x cube plus x square plus 2x. So there are certain coefficients for x cube, there are certain coefficients for x square, there are certain coefficients for x and certain coefficients for x to the power 0. And for each and every case, they will be having different lambda. But none of them will convert the coefficient into 0. This is the most important thing whenever you are using the L2 regression or the ridge regression. Now, what are the inferences? The RSS increase with the increase in lambda. This model complexity reduces. And alpha as small as e to the power minus 15 gives a significant reduction in magnitude of the coefficients. Now, if you want the proof of this, you can just run your own code or I have already uploaded the code in my GitHub. I have given the links in the description and also in the slides that I am sharing with you or and also share the screenshot of the output you can see and compare all the values how the complexity is getting changed just remember with the more the coefficient like more the x square x cube x to the power 4 terms more the complexity of the model high alpha values can lead to significant underfitting though the coefficients are very very small they are never zero this is the one of the most important thing in the ridge regression. Next is the lasso regression. This is also one of the technique to solve the overfitting. This is called the L1 regression. The main difference between the L1 and the L2 is that whenever there was L1 you used to square the coefficients and then multiply it with the lambda. In this case you will take the absolute value of the coefficients and then multiply with the lambda. The lambda figure is again the same and you have to introduce the lambda the same way you did in the last one. The full form of the lasso is least absolute shrinkage and selection operator. Now if you run this particular thing in python code and see the output you can say maximum of the data becomes sparse sparse data means there will be many zero factors that is there would be many coefficients which is converted into zero this means your model is trying to say if these coefficients are not having much effect in your model hence we can convert these coefficients to zero and these will not affect your model anymore this is the way how we are making the python code for the lasso regression in the last one we had imported the ridge in this case i'm importing the lasso same function same type of function same logic 
the in internal logic of lasso and ridges we have been already importing it and see this is the type of output that we get for the lasso regression highly sparse data that is you can see maximum of the points become zero that is we are already saying that the coefficient terms is approximately equal to zero but not zero in case of ridge regression but in this case we are converting it into zero Again, where to use lasso and ridge, it depends upon your data set and what type of output and that you want. This is my code. This is code is similar. We have the predictor, we have my data, uh, the lambda that obviously uh, you will get a table, the table that I have shown here with the different values of alpha, which is which is lambda in our case. Now, uh, this is the column where I have said the first column should be the RSS column, the second column should be the intercept column and what are the other columns which is the coefficients which is like RSS, intercept, coefficient, underscore x, underscore 1, coefficient, underscore. This whole table has been created with this particular code where I know what are the columns, what are the indexes, what is the matrix, that is this particular data frame, how to get it displayed. Okay, this is my GitHub link where I have uploaded the code. There may be some many other techniques where we are trying to fit lasso and uh, ridge regression. Also, there are many other techniques to solve the overfitting. Now, if I give a very simple example, in case of deep learning, we are using one of the techniques which is called a dropout technique. We will discuss these techniques whenever uh, we go for the videos of the deep learning and it is having time for that first i will cover many other important aspects of machine learning which is very important to understand deep learning before switching into deep learning there are many stats method more clearance with the stats and also how do you implement those important things with the python or r uh, parallel other videos are also going on for r so keep watching all the videos for python and r to give a to get a clean and a clear explanation the concept about the machine learning if you like my videos keep watching keep sharing and please hit the subscribe button thanks a lot thanks for your patience thanks a lot okay bye bye